Harley Davidson has just announced their last quarter profit and um, I think they're actually using the word profit wrong. Dave, it's like when I tell you that you're like a valued member of this operation here. I'm using the right words, they just mean something else. Welcome back to Long Way Home everyone. The place we're getting your motorcycle news is easier than riding a 1200 GS Adventure or a Hayabusa in soft sand, but not by much. While all the big Wall Street analysts expected Harley's latest numbers to show a 21 cent profit per share, Harley came swooping in and announced a 44 cent per share loss instead of a profit. Investors, obviously upset, started selling and now the share price has dropped by about 20%. That is about a fifth of the company's worth. The new CEO then quickly came with some reassurances as to why his new hardwire strategy is going according to plan and why it's the way forward for Harley. Stick around while we take a look. Alright, now I'm not very worried about their current share price, that can fluctuate from day to day. I mean, just look at what's happening with GameStop right now. I'm more interested in how the new CEO has further detailed his hardwire plan for Harley. For those of you that don't know, the hardwire strategy basically meant going back to basics for Harley, concentrating on actually making profit by sticking with their existing rider base, the large expensive cruisers and not branching out into newer markets or newer bikes. Now, on the surface, this might look like exactly the right formula to actually go bankrupt in a few years, but the play it safe strategy the new CEO is employing could actually save Harley. Branching out into new markets, coming up with all sorts of new bikes, attracting new blood to the brand sounds all good, but is very expensive and comes with big risks. Exactly the kind of risks Harley cannot literally afford right now. The main priority of the more detailed hardwire plan is plain and simple profit. Not exactly what a customer wants to hear, but exactly what a stakeholder wants to hear. And their main way of getting there will still be focusing on the larger cruiser segment, the touring segment, and of course their expensive trikes, motorcycles with three wheels. Next up is selective expansion in attractive segments, in layman's terms, the Pan America. The adventure touring segment is very attractive right now, has been for many years and will be for many more to come. BMW has been raking it in with record sales for their large 1250GS. The Harley Pan America will be unveiled later on this month and it will be absolutely irrelevant if it's a flop or not. Harley will be sticking with the segment from now on because there is a lot of profit to be made, exactly what they are after at the moment. Next up is electric bikes and no, I know you're thinking live wire here but that is not what Harley is targeting at the moment. A lot of R&D money went into making the live wire. It was a great statement from Harley. Hey look, we made a fully electric bike that actually works. It's 30 grand so we're probably not gonna sell a lot of them but we made it. In the near future Harley will take a lot of the knowledge that went into making the live wire and will come up with smaller, more affordable electric Harleys that are meant for mostly city commuting like the electric scooter they have been working on for a while now. The next couple of steps are your usual mumbo jumbo of customer experience and taking care of shareholders but there are a few interesting bullet points there as well. Harley wants to start up a second hand motorcycle program, Harley Davidson certified. More affordable will probably come with a factory or dealer warranty and Harley can cash in on that sweet sweet financing which is the main profit maker of any auto sales on the planet. It's not the actual product like the car or the bike but the financing agreement that gets them the most profit so why not extend it to secondhand bikes as well. Harley is basically doing damage control right now while still going ahead with its new plan of concentrating on what makes them short term profit. Last year they shipped about 150,000 bikes in total, about a third less than in 2019. That is a huge slice of their pie that is gone now. Poof. 
Officially, they blame all of this on the global pandemic, but anyone that can actually read knows this is utter nonsense since a lot of other manufacturers and not just the small niche ones, but BMW, KTM and even Indian, their closest competitor in the US, had record-breaking sales because a lot of people wanted to go out riding throughout all of 2020's hissy fit. What's in store for Harley in the future, short term or long term as it may be, nobody knows or maybe somebody like Dave that just guesses things. But one thing is for sure, without some short term profits, they're not gonna make it. The good thing, whether we as riders like it or not, that is exactly what they're concentrating on right now, short term profits. In the meantime, why don't you drop down in the comment section below and let us all know what your take on this whole Harley thing is. Who knows, maybe one of you will come up with a better idea than its current Puma CEO. Well, that's the show for today everyone. If you've enjoyed it, give it a big thumbs up and if you think you've learned something new, consider subscribing or becoming one of our Patreons to help us make more of these shows. Cheers and I'll see you on the next one.